Hi, my name is Ronan Mahan. In my latest update to the material pack, I've introduced material function versions for all the materials in the library. This level contains some examples of how you can use material functions. Before I show you some working examples, let me explain the hierarchy of the material functions. If you come down to master materials, you'll see there's a new fabric master. If we open that up, this is the material function fabric master. It lays out the structure for how we construct our fabric shaders. After the fabric master, we come to the master for a particular material type. These are all called master. They live within the functions folder of a particular material, for example, canvas. If we open up the canvas master, this lays out what canvas actually is. So it's a combination of these source maps, all of these fuzzy shader settings, as well as subsurface color settings, subsurface amounts, and then any optional extras like parallax occlusion mapping, ambient occlusion displacements, etc. This is all set in the canvas master. Finally, we have our child functions. This is where we set our final tweaks, such as UV scale, gradient index, uh, subsurface colors, any roughness tweaks we want to make, any metallic tweaks we want to make. If you open that up, these are the final tweaks that are being overridden from the inherited canvas master. I've left this structure intact for all the common parameters that you would normally need to modify. So UV mapping, base color, normal roughness, these are all left here, ready to be plugged in and changed. We'll go through an example for this in a moment. So let's look at a very simple example of material functions in use. This leather, for example, it's using this material, which is the material function example. If we open it up, all it is is a material function, this leather synth blue, being plugged into the material attributes of the material, which gives you this result. This should be identical to the material or material instance version, uh, which exists within this structure here. So I'm going to make a new material. Open up the material. Now this is what a normal material looks like when you create one. And let's say we want to do a slightly different version of that, that leather material that we saw before. Uh, let's go into leather, which is here. Go into functions and let's choose this diamond red. Drop it in here. There's a bug at UE4 for rendering thumbnails for functions. Some of these are rendering black. It happens inconsistently and don't worry, the material functions are working correctly. So I've dropped in my material function, but right now I've got nothing to plug it into because this material is just set up like a standard one. Click anywhere in the viewport over here on the left, turn on use material attributes. So just plug your material function into your attributes and hit save. Now I'll apply that to this object. And you can see now we have the red diamond uh, synthetic letter. If I want to make some changes to this child instance, all I have to do is find the material function, which is this guy here. And I'm going to just copy him to a new variance folder because I don't want to override that original. Now if I drop that into the material graph, plug it into the material attributes, let's delete our old version. If I double click on this function, I now have uh, the function and all the parameters exposed to me. I'm going to change, say, the UV tile, just plug this into UV tile and change the parameter. So two, three, and you can see here the effect of, of changing the parameters. I can plug in the roughness multiply and let's make this a little rougher, so something like this. So from here you can make quickly new variants of your um, original material function. Don't forget that the material here is controlling the shading model for the material function, so you probably want to change the shading model to subsurface. And now if we save, we get the correct subsurface lighting model with the light passing through the edges of the material as opposed to default lit. So let's, let's start to get a bit more out of our material functions. Let's start to do some blending. Uh, so I'm going to find a different material that I want to blend it with. Uh, let's say this uh, crushed vel velvet orange. I'm going to drag this in here. If you right click here and search for layer blend uh, there are multiple ways to blend these materials together. 
I'm going to use a standard blend. I'm going to set the leather as my base material and I'm going to set the velvet as my top material. For my alpha I'm going to just use a checker texture. Let's find one here in the engine content. Let's just drop that in here and plug that into my alpha. Now if I save my material you can see that uh, the two materials are being blended with the texture as the alpha. So you can drive this blend with your own authored textures or masks, for example from Substance Painter, or even you can do more complex uh, vectors and animated masks in Unreal itself. I've included a vertex painted shader as an example. So if we open up this material, you can see I'm using a 10 material layer blend just to blend a background and uh, three other materials. So you've got a vertex color which is driving what the mask is, as well as some extra options for blending in the opacity map around the edges of the vertex colors. So you can have a threaded effect. Let me show you this vertex painted material blend in action. If we come over here to paint and change to colors, we want to click on our asset to make sure it's highlighted. Our painted colors are what drive where each material is. My advice is to make uh, the five colors that you'll need for this to work. So black, white, red, green, and blue. And these are the colors which drive the masks. So if I set this to black for a second and flood fill black, you see now we've just said we want to show our base material. So let's pick our red and we'll start painting on the model. So our red starts to reveal this uh, corduroy. If we switch to green, we start to get this cotton, pink cushion cotton. And finally, if we switch to blue, we reveal our octagon cotton pattern. So you can see that the subsurface colouring is all working, depending on what material you're looking through. And you can use this to uh, vertex paint in your materials. That's it for this update. I hope you enjoy using the material functions. Don't forget to leave a rating or drop me any questions if you have them on the Unreal Marketplace.